at uh, Zivanza and MMC, we keep hosting webinars on M IVF, uh, you know, on uh, embryo transfer, on how to get pregnant. And uh, one, uh, there are always questions about what a woman should be eating and what is good for a woman when she is trying to conceive. Um, not just for the woman, actually, for the male as well. And uh, that's what uh, motivated us to have this webinar with one of the leading nutritionists and dietitians in India, uh, Dr. Mumtaz. I mean, her qualifications are uh, amazing. And I, I really hope that today people benefit from this webinar. Yes, definitely. So I'm looking for the for for the same, and you know, uh, this request has been came from many of the attendees from the last you know uh, webinars that they want to hear uh, you know dietitian, and I'm really happy that Dr. Mumtaz is here with us with a lot of experience. You know, more than 30 years she is practicing now as a dietics, and uh, she has been awarded as PhD, and it's really you know it's immense pleasure today to have Dr. Mumtaz with us. I believe we will start at 7 p.m. And uh, right now it's 6.47. So we have another. I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, from her on how she can help, how diet can play a role in treating infertility and PCOS. So it is seven. Uh, welcome all to Zivanza Quaternary Care. Zivanza specializes in providing one-stop medical facilitation services to patients and their families to access the best quaternary medical care across the world for a whole range of medical conditions requiring advanced and highly specialized medical care. Zivanza is having the physical clinic in Dubai next to Wafi Mall. So once again, good evening everyone and let me uh, introduce our eminent speaker for today. Today we are having Dr. Mumtaz Khalid Ismail. She is a consultant clinical nutritionist practicing for more than 30 years. So wow, more than 30 years. She has awarded PhD in food and nutrition from Mother Teresa Women's University. Her research was on child nutrition. She was a consultant nutritionist for UNICEF Office Kerala. She is a regular columnist in leading newspapers and magazines. Her nutritional opinions have been published in many of the journals and leading newspapers like Pediatric Companion, Times of India, Sunday Observer, and The Hindu. She has drafted the nutrition policy for Kerala state in 2013. She is a president of Association for Evidence-Based Dietics and Nutrition. Her area of interest includes women's nutrition, lifestyle disorders, infant and young child nutrition, research and education, clinical and preventive nutrition, sports nutrition, corporate wellness, public health care, weight management, and this includes all where are the role of dietics is concerned. So today's session uh, will be for 30 minutes and followed by the Q&A, which will be taken by Dr. Mumtaz. So with that, I would like to welcome Dr. Mumtaz on the panel. Dr. Mumtaz, welcome. Hello, doctor. How are you doing? Hello. Hello, fine. Thank you, Jagmeet, for a, uh, a nice introduction. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, Jitmeet, Shweta, Rishwan, and Shafi Mehta for organizing this um, uh, webinar. And um, before, um, and uh, I think uh, today's webinar would be useful for those who are anxiously waiting for this uh, topic. Uh, so I'm not taking much of time. Let me get into the topic. Can I share? Uh, I'll just share my screen. Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. So I'm really excited for today's webinar, doctor, as lots of people are having queries related to diet. So when they're coming to treatment. Over okay. to you, doctor. Thank you, Jadmeet. So uh, today I'll be talking about the nutrition overview on infertility and polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's a very common topic nowadays because I'm seeing at least three or four patients in a week with this uh, syndrome right from, from different age groups. So I think it is the need of the hour. We need to talk more about this disorder as it's considered as one of the lifestyle disorders. Uh, 
polycystic ovarian syndrome is the most common dysfunction of the reproductive age woman and it affects about 15% of the young women from the ages of 15 to 44 it is a hormonal problem it's seen that the worst part is many women who has pcos are not aware that they are having this problem the major symptoms which they suffer are irregular menstruation unwanted hair growth on face and body hair loss fertility struggles oily acne prone skin frequent mood changes weight gain so let's see it's it's not a single uh, way of treatment it's an integrated approach like usual the treatment uh, prescription by the gynecologist is by the uh, prescription of oral contraceptive pills to regulate the menstruation or to reduce the acne because patients experience uh many symptoms which are similar to diabetes so metformin is a medication which is uh, given to lower the inflammation as well as to regulate the blood sugar levels it should be a holistic approach should be taken to uh, to lessen the symptoms of pcos when we talk about pcos obesity pcos infertility all three comes in together because we have we are seeing that 35 to 50% of the women with pcos are obese i'm not saying that thin people will not get pcos yes we are seeing thin people also but majority of the people what we are seeing is females with obesity that is 50% of the overweight women have pcos obesity also plays a significant role in determining many metabolic disorders especially diabetes mellitus so it relates to uh, infertility menstrual irregularities are mainly seen with people with more of bmi body mass index more than 30 bmi i'll be talking more about bmi what is the bmi and how what is the differences and all uh, in in the coming slides so we have to be very careful about our weight because it is the women face lot of problem because of the weight and it is related to that pcos and infertility it, it can be treated by reducing the weight also the major areas of concern is the managing uh, fertility concerns like getting pregnant because without menstruation it is a difficult part so managing insulin resistance and the onset of diabetes decreasing the imbalance of male and female hormones managing the risk of cardiac uh, problems first of all by diagnosing the pcos what generally uh, the doctors do is a physical examination of the pelvis to see if there are any abnormalities in the uterus blood tests are been done to see the hormonal uh, levels is there any abnormalities in the hormonal levels is there any imbalances in the hormonal levels test uh, like uh, triglycerides insulin like hbavc cholesterol levels all these are being uh, taken ultrasound is also taken to find out whether any cysts or ovaries are there uh, it, if it is there present in the ovaries and the uterus so coming into uh, the main uh, problem the central obesity is one of the major indicator of the insulin resistance that is the visceral fat is a main culprit so we have to be very particular the women of uh, adolescent age onwards the visceral fat percentage has to come to the normal level the visceral fat percentage uh, that is uh, it is uh, with the machine only we can with the body composition analyzer we can check the body fat percentage or the visceral fat percentage but in simple terms Uh, you can check your abdominal obesity by checking your waist circumference that is on the thinnest part of the body you can check your waist circumference for females it should be less than 80 cm uh, then it is considered as normal those who have more than 80 cm is uh, the central obesity is termed so that it will worsen the metabolic and endocrine profiles in pcos and it will also decrease the response to the treatment so it is very important to reduce the abdominal obesity that is a uh, uh, visceral uh, obesity which is just below the navel and just above the navel area that area has to be 
वेरी केयरफुल बाय डूइंग ऑल द एब्डोमिनल क्रंचेस एंड कैलोरी बर्न एक्सरसाइजेस कैन बी डन टू रिड्यूस द एब्डोमिनल ओबेसिटी इज इट दैट सिंपल uh like uh, i am talking about weight loss uh losing weight like getting into a place and lose weight and get pregnant no it is not that simple by uh, uh seeing this photograph uh, if you see that getting into one gate and getting out with weight loss it doesn't it's not that simple it has lot of uh, um uh, areas to have to be covered uh, to get into uh, this pcos and infertility problems many components of lifestyle is very important that is sedentary lifestyle also affects uh, pcos eating habits weight gain stress uh, depression all these components make a major uh, play a major role in affecting pcos and weight gain so all these para components has to be taken into consideration while treating the pcos uh, so management alone cannot be done by a dietitian or nutritionist it's a multidisciplinary approach has to be taken by a clinician dietitian exercise specialist psychologist and counselor as i said that these people will go into stress and depression so the psychologist play a great role and counselor plays a great role there and for weight loss yes we need an exercise specialist so who can help us to burn the calories how which exercise burns more calories and all that is uh, taken care uh, by an exercise specialist dietitian can help us or nutritionist can help the patient by telling them what is the right food to eat and what is right and what is wrong in eating the food i'll be discussing more on the diet part in today's webinar modifications what we need to do is diet exercise weight loss behavioral changes smoking cessation alcohol and sleep these are the points which we need to take into consideration to regularize the pcos and to uh, uh, get uh, uh, problems with infertility so uh, right from the beginning i'm telling that losing weight is a one way to manage the symptoms of metabolic and hormonal imbalances so with like if those with pcos we are seeing that insulin resistance and diabetes is also very common so weight loss is a major uh, uh, problem which we need to address bmi is a body mass index that we uh, classify into two criteria that is who classification and asia pacific classification worldwide we all these years we were following the who classification uh, uh, but recently since uh, asians are more prone to overweight and obesity and all these lifestyle disorders are increasing the asian population now we have got an another classification for asian pacific classification that is uh, if your bmi is uh, more than 23 you are considered as overweight category so weight is an important parameter which has to be taken into consideration bmi it can be easily calculated by weight in kg divided by height in meter squares weight in kg divided by height in meter squares you can get the bmi so try to maintain your bmi between um, 22 to 23 range so which is ideal so that you can be free from the lifestyle disorders not only pcos and diabetes all the lifestyle disorders can be easily taken care if and the bmi is in the correct uh, range weight loss patients who develop weight loss plan especially with the body mass index more than 30 uh, has to be taken into consideration they should really plan out the uh, exercise and diet plan to lose the weight and uh, uh, at least 5% uh, loss of body weight can give significant improvement in the metabolic and hormonal balance immediately the menstrual problems can be corrected they can the menstruation will be corrected easily and their uh, insulin resistance also uh, uh, we can see drastic difference if there is a small reduction in the weight itself diet uh, as per in considered in the diet we need to uh, concentrate more on low carbohydrate that is complex carbohydrate has to be used that is whole grains uh, uh, can be considered and low glycemic index foods uh, 
can be taken into consideration and uh, these foods which help to regularize the bloodstream and it will help in the pcos generally it is seen that people generally avoid completely the carbohydrate that is not a good scenario you have to have carbohydrate in the diet carbohydrate proteins fats vitamins minerals everything is needed in the diet but carbohydrate choose from the healthy carbohydrate like complex carbohydrate has to be taken in the diet to regularize the diet portion control is another important factor that is instead of eating two meals or three large meals split the meals into five to six meals a day by smaller servings and that helps to regularize uh, uh, the uh, meal plan and it helps to reduce the calorie content in the diet smaller meals and frequent meals it's it's good to reduce the um, you know, weight uh generally let's see what are the foods we can eat we include in the pcos or, or in insulin resistance stages that is they can include lot of green leafy vegetables focus on whole foods and sources of proteins like fish eggs and chicken can be included those who are vegetarian they can opt for sprouts um pulses and legumes can be taken uh in the diet uh then sprout uh, uh, like spices there is no restriction spices but specific sp uh, spices like turmeric cinnamon fenugreek ginger these are all anti inflammatory spices which are believed to help in the insulin resistance so these spices can be included in the diet to regularize the menstrual uh, regulation and uh, these uh, uh, spices mainly uh, cinnamon has got a very good uh, effect in uh, getting the regular menstruation and regularizing the blood glucose levels but one thing we have to remember in cinnamon is like uh, like uh, in some places uh, cinnamon can be easily adulterated by using cassia so patients has to be very careful by selecting cassia or cinnamon fruits yes fruits should be uh, taken in uh, in good quantity especially berries are really uh, helpful in pcos raspberries blackberries uh, strawberries all the berries blueberries all berries are really good for pcos and fruits should be selected from low fructose and which are high in fiber like watermelons papayas and uh, um, honey dew uh, mass melons pineapples all these uh, fruits are also beneficial for uh, pcos uh, patient but uh, fruits which are high in uh, carbohydrate content like banana custard apple um, uh, uh, sapota or chiku uh, can be avoided uh, by uh, the people with pcos and diabetes because they carry lot of uh, carbohydrate in the diet fats yes fats is also very important in the diet there are like our body requires essential fats in our body our body uh, requires fat has to be supplied for uh, uh, all our major function we need fat increasing healthy fats is a great way uh, to uh, help especially the fat soluble vitamins absorption like a d e k uh, vitamins it helps uh, uh, in the absorption so essential fats has to be taken in the diet uh, it has to be supplied in the diet because it is not been produced in the uh, body so we need to supply it from outside so uh, salmon mackerel sardines butter olive oil can be taken but oils should be very particular it should be Uh, good fats has to be taken and fats very uh, re remember uh, the ideal intake should be oil butter ghee all inclusive good fat should not exceed more than 500 ml per month per person uh, that means approximately 1 tablespoon per day can be taken uh, so in your salads and your uh, 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 it's better to avoid oils but in cooking yes you can use butter and uh, oils in the but use different types of oils rather than using the same type of oils use a pufa mufa uh, content of oils in the diet carbohydrates proteins and fats try to split the uh, carbohydrate proteins and fats in the diet and cholesterol should be less than 300 mg cholesterol is basically remember it is present only in animal products uh, and uh, especially in liver brain trap all these egg yolk all these uh, foods only cholesterol is present cholesterol is not present in any of the plant products so uh, the foods which contain cholesterol has to be restricted 
and use low fat cooking like baking broiling grilling baking rather than frying and braising and all use liquid oil rather than uh, uh, solid oils like vanaspati trans fat has to be uh, avoided in the diet try to say no to white pasta white rice uh, uh, fruit juices with concentrated uh, sugar and uh, smoothies cold milk you can use Uh, try to avoid some people we are seeing that dairy uh, give problem with pcos but not for everyone dairy gives trouble so we have to do an elimination diet and see that whether uh, dairy can be taken or not so uh, it is not a hard and fast rule that all pcos has to avoid dairy products uh, uh, some can take it but that is on uh, um, your elimination you can try it whether you can use milk or not excess intake of tea coffee can be avoided and high sugar should be avoided completely in the diet calcium and vitamin d also plays a major role in the egg maturation and in the uh, follicle development in the ovaries so vitamin d is essential for promoting calcium absorption from the food in the intestines vitamin d basically as you must be aware that it is available only from sunlight so if your vitamin d levels are low and if you are not getting any sunlight exposure the uh, it is better to supplement vitamin d because vitamin d has been associated with many problems related to pcos infertility weight gain and insulin resistance some people say that their weight loss is very less they don't uh, lose weight but uh, seeing their vitamin d levels if it is vitamin d levels is very low yes their weight loss is very difficult so try to correct the vitamin d levels before trying to lose weight B vitamins also plays a major role in uh, uh, PCOS, especially vitamin B two helps to convert dietary fats into proteins, carbohydrates into energy. Vitamin B three helps to maintain the blood sugar levels. B five helps in weight loss due to ability of to control fats, and B six also has got very important role in the woman's hormonal fertility. Uh, it is also uh, needed for the proper absorption of zinc. Uh, uh for females so vitamin b6 uh, uh, has got b6 is pyridoxin uh, and along with b2 b3 b6 is essential for normal thyroid function also some fe- some females we are seeing that they have thyroid irregular irregularity also uh, so that uh, has to be corrected uh, with reduction in the body weight vitamin b2 is riboflavin vitamin b3 is niacin vitamin b5 is pathogenic acid magnesium yes almonds cashew spinach are pcos friendly foods so these can be taken almonds preferably it should be soaked and it can be taken so that the soaking removes the phytate in the uh, food so uh, almonds can be uh, taken but the fi- uh, the skin should not be removed it should be washed thoroughly and soaked in good water because the f- uh, skin has got lot of fiber in it fiber also helps in weight loss and pcos and almonds also considered as heart friendly so it is very good to consume a few a fistful of um, almonds maybe 5 to 6 almonds every day in the diet it is good to include uh it is uh, caffeine it is seen that caffeine consumption is linked to changes in lot of estrogen levels and hormone behavior so try to avoid uh, too much of coffee in the diet or try using decaffeinated uh, coffee can be taken or switch off to uh, green tea or um, uh, uh, green coffee is better than um, uh, normal coffee because it uh, it alters the um, uh, hormone behavior so this can be reduced in the diet taking supplements as i said that if your vitamin d levels are low it is better to take vitamin d supplements because sunlight is only source and from food it is very uh, it is not uh, you will not get enough uh, vitamin d from the food so supplement is uh, required uh, to uh, educate to uh, correct the vitamin d levels or to reduce the insulin resistance other supplements uh, which helps in the manage of insulin resistance are alpha lipolytic acid chromium and pinitol these are the supplements which can be taken uh, for pcos 
Estrogen dominance is uh, uh, there, it, it contributes a hormonal imbalance. So uh, eating cruciferous vegetables, cruciferous vegetables are uh, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, cabbage. Uh, these are the cruciferous vegetables. This helps in the estrogen uh, metabolism and this helps to in the uh, hormone therapy. But whereas those with uh, thyroid dysfunction, they should avoid the cruciferous vegetable because they have a lot of uh, goitrogenous present in it. But study says that if you cook the vegetable, cruciferous vegetables and you use, you, this uh, can be taken. There is no harm in taking if it is cooked. It, uh, uh, the, the cruciferous, uh, the uh, goitrogenous effects reduces by cooking the cruciferous vegetables. We need to reduce uh, the inflammation in the body. So re uh, reduce the consumption of processed foods, red meat and saturated fats, which helps in the of inflammation. We support uh, by giving uh, omega-3 uh, fats. Omega-3 is present mainly in fish, that is sacrate, uh, sardine and mackerel has got very good percentage of omega-3 fatty acid. For vegetarians, they can opt for flaxseed, uh, uh, flax seeds. Flax seeds can be taken and uh, don't uh, use the roasted flax seeds. You can use the plain flax seeds and walnuts also helps in supporting the omega-3 fatty acids in the body. So flax seeds and walnuts, almonds can be included to reduce the inflammation in the body. Along with that, as I said earlier, cinnamon is also very good to reduce the blood glucose levels. So cinnamon uh, can be taken as one teaspoon powder can be taken or if you are using extract, 200 to 300 milligram of extract can be taken. You can directly take the cinnamon or you can use it in your tea or you can use it in your porridges or you can use it in your overnight oats. It tastes better or it, so if, since sugar has to be reduced, cinnamon gives a better flavor in your cereals and uh, or you can add it to your fruits and can have it so that gives a better flavor better taste and it uh, gives you the double double purpose of having cinnamon managing anxiety uh, is also very important in pcos women who has pcos uh, it seems that they have increased activity levels and they have to reduce their anxiety levels and they have to reduce their stress management has to be very important by try to do breathing and relaxation exercises and mindful practices has to be uh, practiced to reduce the anxiety and uh, that is one way to reduce the anxiety is the exercise and uh, physical activity. That is any form of physical activity can uh, reduce your depression or anxiety, your stress levels uh, by doing any form of physical activity like walking or working out or aerobics or any form of physical activity. Those who are physios like with obesity and they want to lose weight, Step climbing is a, one of the best form of physical activity which reduces more calories. That is 2,500 calories you burn in step climbing for one hour. Just normal walking, you burn only 250 to 300 calories. Whereas a swimming or any game, you burn around 600 to 650 calories. So try to do any physical activity at least for 45 minutes every day to lose some weight. Remember, to lose one kg of weight, you need to burn around 7,000 kilocalories, which you can achieve in a week's time. Target of uh, in a week's time, burn 7,000 calories, which you can easily achieve by doing your physical activity and your normal activity also counts and your, uh, you can, uh, your uh, uh, metabolism can also be increased by doing physical activity. Uh, it will reduce, it has got a lot of purposes, it reduces the stress, it reduces the anxiety, it also reduces your weight and it will help in your PCOS and in your infertility. So we have to define a goal. That is, first of all, the body composition has to be improved, especially the BMI body mass index and waist hip ratio or the waist circumference. As I said, waist circumference, just measure on your navel your waist circumference. It should be 
less than 80 centimeter is considered as normal. If you have uh, body fat percentage measurement, like body composition analyzer, that is good. The visceral fat has to be checked and visceral fat should be less than 10 percentage and the skeletal muscle also has to be reduced. Define some goal uh, and uh, try to get the dependence from medications and improve your depression so that you can achieve your target. Stress and anxiety Anxiety, yes, you can, if your exercise and your diet is not helping, and if it is worse in the quality, try to get a psychologist help in counseling, which they will help you in reducing the stress and anxiety. Minimize alcohol consumption along with smoking also is very bad for PCOS, which has to be reduced uh, in, uh, to reduce the PCOS condition. Last, uh, but not the sleep, Sleep is also very important in PCOS. Aim for eight, like I have said, eight to 10 hours, but at least try to get at least six to seven hours of sleep per night. Establish a regular bedtime routine. Try to sleep at the right time, same time every day, and try to get up at the same time every day. So that good routine will help you to maintain uh, the sleep pattern. Sleep is also very important to controlling the PCOS uh, condition. Avoid stimulants and rich fatty foods before bedtime. Try to have food at least two to three hours before your bedtime so that you get good sleep. Try to avoid the electronic gadgets at least one hour before your bedtime. So this will give you a good sleep uh, Finally, the take-home message is eat healthy. That is a well-balanced, healthy eating has to be practiced. Do regular exercise, manage your stress level, and adequate sleep is very important to um, manage the PCOS and to get uh, control the infertility problem. And if you have insulin resistance also, that can also be easily corrected. So are you ready for a change? Always remember that you are not on a diet. Always say that I'm changing my lifestyle. If that is the in, in your mind, then it is very easy. As Hippocrates has said, let food be thy the medicine. So always remember that uh, you can change your lifestyle by eating healthy. Always remember that you are not dieting, you are changing your lifestyle. So that makes really interesting and easy to follow your uh, uh, health. And thank you so much. Thank you for patient hearing. Thank you so much. Any uh, queries? Thank you, doctor. That was uh, really uh, very insightful. And as you can see, you know, we've got 100 and 206 people attending your webinar today. So doctor, in the Q&A section, if you can go there, and there are a lot of questions which people have asked. So uh, Japneet, over to you. Maybe you can just ignore some of the questions which are related to certificate, etc. and take the important ones. Yes, definitely. So I am getting a few of the comments in the chat box. Firstly, are related to the full video they want. You can uh, follow us on social media handles. There you can see the video again. Some people are asking for the slides. Uh, the slides will 